Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today I'm going to show you various different things on the Nintendo Switch Lite. Hopefully some of the things you will not have seen before, you might not have even thought about it before. Some things will be absolutely ridiculous, some things might actually be quite useful if they were implemented properly, or other things might be fine just as they are now. To give you an idea of what might be happening later on, check it out. A little HD rumble pack, but it won't be HD but it will be rumbling, so let me show you that later on. Let's get started. Copilot is where you have two controllers working as the one player. So this might be useful if you're playing games with your kids and they're struggling on a certain part of the game. Rather than them having to hand the switch to you, you can just have the controller in your hands and the bit they're struggling on, you can just take over for that particular bit. Likewise, if you're struggling on something, then somebody else can help you out. So if you have a look here, you can see that we're both controlling player one and it doesn't matter which one we use. Let me show you another game. Again, if you look here, you can see that we're controlling it on the switch lights, but equally we can take over and do it on the controller here. So again, you can see that the gameplay can be shared. Right, let's move on to something else. On some games, we can use the Switch Lite as one controller and then another controller as player two. So this might be useful if, for example, you're going on a car journey and then your kids are in the back of the car. You don't have to have two controllers to be able to play two players. On a lot of games you do, but not all games. So on some games, one child will be able to use this as one controller and then if you get yourself another Joy-Con or a Pro Controller they will be able to use this as player two. So for example on a game like Mario Kart unfortunately it will not work. It expects you to connect up two separate controllers when using the Switch in tabletop mode. But there are other games where it does work. So let me show you a couple of them. So this is Cuphead and if you have a look you can see one player and two player. Okay, so you can see that there. So you can see here we can move the classic controller as one player and the pro controller as another player. Again, two players working, one as a switch light and one as a pro controller. And again, if you watch this, you can see player one. And now look, as soon as I start moving this, player two. Right, okay, let's move on. Say you want to play your Nintendo Switch Lite on the big screen. You want to put it on a projector, but obviously we can't dock it. Well, what we're going to do now is put it into the homemade dock box. So in here we have a camera and a projector. And then when we dock it at the end here, like so, then it will be projected up onto the ceiling up here. So let's turn the lights off and let me show you a bit of gameplay. Right, so here we go. For some reason I have lost the reds on this. I don't know if my projector's playing up or whether it's the cable or the camera, but you can still get the idea. So up on uh, the ceiling here, I think that would equate to probably around a, I would say a 60 to 70 inch screen. Let me just show you a little bit of gameplay. Now, the good thing about when you're using a camera, there's very, very little lag. It doesn't feel any different than when you're just using it normally in handheld mode. Right, I'll just get into first place just to show you that it is a viable option. Yep, 
There we go. Right, okay, let's move on to the next one. On the Nintendo Switch Lite, the headphone jack is modular, so it's quite easy to change over. So if you're unfortunate and you manage to snap your headphones just as they went into the port, then you will be able to just replace just the headphone jack on its own, so it will be quite cheap. Now if you don't want to take your Nintendo Switch Lite apart, then another option is just to get yourself an external sound card. So this is a USB-C one, very cheap, and whenever you plug this in, it will take priority over the actual headphone port itself. So at the moment you can see there's no sound even though we have it on full because it thinks there's headphones connected. But now watch this, as soon as we plug this in you will see it will go to USB and now we can adjust the volume on the USB sound card using the switch here and this will always take priority over the headphone jack. So let's plug the headphones into it and if you have a listen here you can hear now that they're working through there. If you do actually want to take the switch apart in order to replace that port or to try and free up the snapped jack, let me show you how to do that. Right, and this is where we have access to our headphone jack just here. So basically I'm going to undo the four screws here look here once we fold this down so that's just up there once we fold it down you see there's a tiny little ribbon cable here we just need to lift that little flap up and the ribbon cable will slide out and now we have a headphone jack so that's how easy it is to replace now let's see if I can easily take this headphone jack broken part out of it right so what I'm going to do is I've got some tweezers here and if you have a look there's just a tiny tiny little gap here and also the other side here I'm just going to put my tweezers in here and I'm gently just going to start poking it up. Right, can you see now it's just sticking up ever so slightly? So I can get my pliers and hopefully I can squeeze that and out it comes there, nice and easy. And now we just have to reassemble it and you can see that it's a very straightforward job to do. As you can see now we've got the speakers working again. You can see the symbol up there and obviously you can hear it. And now, plug in the headphone jack. And you will see it will go over to headphones and now if you listen here, you can hear them working. So nice and simple to do. Now that is a benefit over the normal switch because with the normal switch the card reader and the headphone jack is all one unit so it's going to be harder and more expensive to replace. Right, let's move on to the next one. The Nintendo Switch Lite screen is 5.5 inches diagonally across, but you don't need to be envious of your friend's Switch even though they have got 6.2 inches across, because all you need to do is go out and get yourself a hands-free magnifier and then you will be the one who everybody envies. Let me show you. So there we have it, you see? Wrap it round your neck, rest it on your belly, and now, when you hold your switch there, we are now looking at an 11 inch screen. So when you're waiting for the bus or the train or waiting for your hot date, you can sit back and play on an 11 inch screen without having any worry that maybe you bought the wrong Nintendo Switch. So here we have another magnifier. This one's set up for tabletop mode. You get the idea? So now when we place it down there, you can see that the screen has been magnified. So kicking back with your Pro Controller and you can see the switch screen there. Right, let me uh, show you in all its beauty. There we go. Now the Nintendo Switch Lite does not have HD rumble, in fact it doesn't have rumble of any description, so it doesn't even have a tiny little motor with an off-centered weight. Now the normal Switch does have HD rumble, even in handheld mode. Now the Nintendo Switch Lite will allow HD rumble when we connect up additional controllers to it, but the actual console itself will not rumble. So if you listen, all that noise is coming from here and none of it is coming from here. So I was wondering if there's any way that we could actually install Rumble 
on the Nintendo Switch Lite. And I was chatting to my friend Elliot from the Retro Future about it, and he told me about this interesting little thing that you used to be able to connect up to a Game Boy. So let me hand you over to Elliot to show you what that is. Hey Vince, how's it going? My name is Elliot from the Retro Future. Today I'm going to very quickly show you the Pulse Pack for the Game Boy Pocket. This thing was made by Interact. Essentially, it's a pass-through speaker which plugs into the headphone port on the Game Boy Pocket. It does run off of two AAA batteries. It has a vibration motor in it that is essentially connected to the speaker. It doesn't really make the volume any louder or quieter maybe a tad louder but so it does actually work quite well you know when i get hit by the electricity i get a bit of a vibration and also when i fire my gun i get a vibration but also it will vibrate just from the music as well which is obviously not really what you want you want a bit more of a sort of defined vibration for a specific reason that's all from me catch you guys later thanks for that elliot so i'm thinking about a similar sort of thing now we could just get ourselves a case to slot this into and then we could just use the game boy one with a little headphone male to female extension cable coming out of here and we could just stick the game boy pack onto the back here now we could do that but i'm wondering if there's a way we can actually open up the nintendo switch and have a look around the pads see if there's anywhere that we can solder uh, little HD rumble onto. Wow, look at this. It's like Nintendo have designed this just for me. So here we have the left hand speaker. Remember, this is the back of the switch. And if you have a look, we have this little connector here that plugs into this female here to give us sound. And if you look at a HD rumble from a spare Joy-Con I have, look at the connector. It's exactly the same. So all we have to do is plug that connector into there and basically then we're going to have the audio coming through the HD rumble pack. Annoyingly, this doesn't quite fit down here. So I'm going to put the cover back on. And I'm just going to leave this hanging out for the moment. OK, so the speaker is now removed and I've just got this little HD rumble in here. Just loose. It's just hanging through the side at the moment. Believe it or not, it does actually work, but obviously only on some games. Remember, all we're doing is converting the sounds into vibration so it might cause the switch damage so don't copy this at home this is just messing around but what i've done on street fighter is i've turned the music off so now the only sound it makes is for example when you do something and you can really feel it vibrate as soon as you do that movement so in this instance it actually does add to the game so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to rest that against my ring here so you can hear it because it's metal against metal and just listen to this Yeah, that is actually vibrating. It does feel, it feels good. That is the honest truth. Obviously we're down to one speaker, so that doesn't, that's not gonna be as good. But I wonder whether somebody would be able to add some kind of rumble to this. And it, it sounds different, listen to this one. Yeah, compared to this. Can you hear they sound different? Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get a trigger from a uh, Xbox controller, the little trigger motor, and I'm going to see if it's going to fit in this corner here. So these are the little trigger motors in here from the Xbox controller, Xbox One. Now I've taken it out, but unfortunately, the switch doesn't power this whatsoever. So I presume the energy needed to power the HD rumble is a lot less than the full-on motor. Just like an Elliott's Game Boy version, remember it had separate batteries to power it. So what I've done is I've extended out the cables from here. I've run it along in this bit here and I've put the HD rumble just on a sticky pad at the back here. And now you won't be able to hear it because it's uh, on here. But now when I feel that, I can really feel that rumbling through. I can feel it rumbling through the switch. But I think I'm going to leave that on there for a while just to see what it's like. It's a novelty for me just to have rumble working on the Nintendo Switch Lite. So I think that's a nice way to end this video. If you've got any enjoyment from it at all, please give it a thumbs up. 
Remember, a lot of the things that I do in here is just purely for the novelty of doing it. Some things could have potential. Others, like that magnifier, would never really have much potential at all. But if you've enjoyed any of the ideas at all, then think about subscribing. Take care. Thanks so much for watching. Bye now.